All right. Here we go again. Back to Basics Bible Study. I am your host. I am your facilitator, or your teacher. For the hour, Reverend Corey Evans Sr., you have tuned in to Back to Basics Bible Study, our weekly virtual Bible study that we conduct on our Zoom line every Thursday at seven o'clock. You have tuned in to a Bible study that God placed it upon our heart and gave me the vision for a couple of years ago um, before the pandemic, well, right at the pandemic rather, that God wants us to get back to basics. Uh, he gave me the vision and we titled it as such that he wants us to get back to studying his Bible word for word, chapter by chapter, book by book, line by line, word by word if necessary, so that the people of God can receive the content and the context of scripture, of his word, so we can know his plans and his promises uh, for our life. And the only way you can do that is to learn his Bible in its totality, in the proper context. And you have to do that by taking the book or the chapter together and studying it together, not doing a word study and pulling out one word or one verse out of the entire book. So with that being said, we have matriculated ourselves down to 2 Chronicles chapter 22. 2 Chronicles chapter 22. Now, if you, <clears throat> if you look at our outline, 2 Chronicles, you see that uh, chapters one through nine was the United Kingdom under King Solomon. Okay, you will see that the United Kingdom under King Solomon. That was chapters one through nine. Well, then chapters 10 through 36 is the Southern Kingdom under Judean kings. Okay, so it was the United Kingdom under King Solomon was Second Chronicles started one chapters one through nine. When you hit chapter 10, now you have the southern kingdom under Judean kings. I have to say this. I know you guys that come on every week, you're tired of me saying this, but we have new people on the line every week. So I have to keep reiterating this, okay? So bear with me. Most people, the vast majority of the people that reads this part of the Bible don't understand the aspect of when in history the kingdoms split, okay? God never intended for the kingdom to split. You had Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, okay? Then Jacob, of course, name was changed to Israel. Israel had the 12 sons, correct? That's where we get the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel was one kingdom, and they were, were to operate as one kingdom, okay? But of course, as we suffer with today, when we allow outside influences to come in, when we allow manners and customs and, and ways um, of the satanic people and the satanic forces around us, when we allow that to creep into our lives and we accept it little by little, generation after generation, when we do that, then we start being influenced by the world instead of us influencing the world, okay? And that was the problem here. So then what happened, the two kingdoms, well, the one kingdom split into two. So chapter one through nine, the kingdom was united under King Solomon. But then it broke off. It broke off around 931 BC, where you see Rehoboam was the king. And then Jeroboam was the king of, as we say, the bad side or the Northern kingdom. Okay. So that's where the split happened. So you had Rehoboam, um, on the, in the southern kingdom, which was Judah. And then Judah was comprised of the tribe of Judah. That's why it was called Judah, the tribe of Judah, and also Benjamin, okay? And any stragglers from the other tribes, it was there, but primarily Judah and Benjamin who resided with Judah, okay? And the Levites, which was a Levitical priest, but they were not counted, Okay. They, they were just involved with it. They were not counted. So then the other 10 tribes is Israel. So when people read the Bible, it confuses them because they see Israel and they're reading about a king, but then it says Judah and they're reading about a king and they're saying, but this is still Israel. Correct. It is still Israel, but the kingdom was divided. 
So you had 10 tribes worshiping false gods and one tribe or technically two tribes worshiping the one true God. Okay, we got it. Okay, now let's go forward. So I'll just work on that as we are going through. So now we have the Southern kingdom and Chronicles, first, second Chronicles speaks of it this way. It's from the, the viewpoint, the chronicler is writing from the viewpoint of speaking or giving you details more so from the viewpoint of the Southern kingdom, okay? And adding in what the Northern kingdom was doing. So yes, first and second Kings and Solomon and all that, you're getting all this information already, but it covered both sides equally. First and second Chronicles is speaking of it or the chronicler is writing from the perspective of the Judean kings, the history of Judah, the, the kingdom, okay? But also what was going on in the Northern kingdom as well, adding to it, okay? <clears throat> I, I hope that helps somebody. Most, I get messages every week saying the same thing. I never knew that. <laughs> so I, I, I have to make sure to include that because it confuses you. Let's go. Chapter 22, Second Chronicles chapter 22. Let's go, okay? Um, and I know there's a lot of names in here, guys, so don't, don't let that slow you down and let you struggle through it, okay? All right, that first name you see is Ahaziah, okay? Ahaziah, okay? It says, get you a study Bible so you have a heading, so you can get your brain right of what the chapter is talking about. Chapter 22 starts off with a heading, Ahaziah reigns in Judah. So that means that's the king of Judah not the king of Israel, just Judah, the southern kingdom, okay? Then the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah his youngest son king in his place. For the raiders who came with the Arabians into the camp had killed all the older sons. Go back to the last session so you can get the build up to this, okay? So Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. So now we have a new king. Okay, it was Jehoram, but now it's Ahaziah, all right? And this is Judah. So Ahaziah was 42 years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. Every time when it walks through the kings, it would tell you how old they were, uh, and it would tell you how long they reigned, okay? And so... Um, so Okay, then Ahaziah was 42 years old when he became king and he reigned one year. And his mother's name, it gives his mother's name here because it's going to talk about her a little later. And his mother's name that looks a little strange, but it says Aphalaya. Apha. There's no F in it, but it's pronounced in the Hebrew Fa. Aphalaya. So his mother's name was Aphalaya. Okay, and we're talking about Ahaziah. All right, here we go. So he also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab for his mother, Aphaliah, advised him to do wickedly, okay? Wickedly. Mm. So when it says in the ways of the house of Ahab, that's not in the ways of God, okay? All right, therefore he did evil, verse four, in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab, for they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. Watch the wise counsel that you think you're getting. Be careful where it's coming from. If it's not godly counsel, rebuke it in Jesus' name, okay? All right, so verse five, he also followed their advice and went with Jehoram, the son of Ahab, okay? king of Israel to war against the king of Syria. See, there you go right there. You get it? And there you go. So it says he was influenced or followed the ways of Ahab. Well, it's just told you Ahab was the king of Israel, which is what? His cousins. It's still the 12 tribes of Israel, but now the kingdom is divided. And that's what people get confused. So when a king of Judah, the southern kingdom, says, I'm going to connect with a king of the northern kingdom of Israel, 
we look at it like, oh my goodness, like this is the worst thing ever. They're, they're actually following false gods, but their, their family is still the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 sons of Jacob, name changed to Israel, their cousins, first, second, third, fourth, fifth cousins, whatever it is, they're all family, okay? They all come from Israel, all come from Jacob. So keep that in mind when you see them keep falling like this, it's their family that they're connecting with. So come on, somebody. Even if it's your family, you have to rebuke it if they're following false gods. That's your, that's your takeaway from this. I don't care who they are. It could be your mother, your father. If they're worshiping false gods, you got to rebuke that. You got to pray for them and you have to influence them and don't let them influence you. <clears throat> oh my God, we ain't even made it to the first 10 verses yet. <laughs> Come on, somebody, let's roll. Then he returned to Jezreel uh, to recover from his wounds, which he had received at Ramah when he fought against the king of Syria. And um, Azariah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Jehoram, the son of Ahab in Jezreel, because he was sick. His going to Joram was God's occasion for Haziah's downfall. Mm. God was always in the mix. For when he arrived, he went out with Jehoram against Jehu, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. <laughs> they was worshiping false gods. The house of Ahab was the northern kingdom, the king on the northern side, the king of Israel. And it happened. When Jehu was executing judgment on the house of Ahab and found the prince of Judah and the sons of Ahaziah's brothers who served Ahaziah, that he killed them. Then he searched for Ahaziah and they caught him because he was hiding in Samaria and brought him to Jehu. When they had killed him, they buried him because they said he is the son of Jehoshaphat who sought the Lord with all his heart. So they gave him a just burial, even though they killed him. <laughs> they gave him a just burial because of who his descendant was. Mm. His descendant, Jehoshaphat, followed the Lord with all his heart, but he did not. You follow me? So the house of Ahaziah had no one to assume power over the kingdom because all the brothers were dead, okay? They were dead. So now, so who do we have left? I gave you that name, Aphaliah. So now your heading is Aphaliah reigns in Judah, the mother, <laughs> okay? There was no one left. So did God make her king? No, she made herself king. Now, when Aphaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she rose and destroyed all the royal heirs of the house of Judah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Now, this woman was something else, okay? She arose and destroyed all the royal heirs of the house of Judah to where there was no one left. So Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away. This was a baby, okay? She killed everybody but the baby. Stole him away from among the king's sons who were being murdered and put him in his nurse and his nurse in a bedroom. So the daughter of the king hid him from Aphaliah, so that she did not kill him. And he was hidden with them in the house of God for six years, while Aphaliah reigned over the land. Mm. You see how we have evil after evil after evil? You have to watch that. We have to watch who we have in our ear. Come on, somebody. You have to watch what you receive in your ear gate, in your eye gate, any way that you can receive information by hearing, by seeing, you have to really, really watch that, people. You have to watch that. 
because you will be influenced without knowing it with things that are not of God. That's just the truth. Watch what you're listening to. Watch what you're seeing. And if you say, okay, well, yeah, well, I understand this. They were just being influenced. Well, we're doing the same thing. We're doing the same thing even today. We, you can look on the internet and pull up the award show that, that, that just launched last week or so. And you can see flat out devil worshiping, satanic rituals right there um, on TV for millions and millions and billions of people to see. And our children, ourselves, our children, we're sitting there listening to these things, watching these things like it's okay. Just because Beyonce or Rihanna or all these different people sit up and put up these satanic worshiping skits and rituals is what it is. Everybody's watching the war show, just listening to it and just watching it. This is the same principle. This is what happened to the children of Israel. They were influenced by satanic nations and they accepted it as the norm, like we accept it as the norm. We can see people with horns on their heads and throwing all these satanic symbols, all these rappers and all these singers and all the people on movies and everybody in entertainment. And you actually think that it means nothing. It does mean something, people. It means something. Stop watching it. Stop listening to it. Let's break this curse and, and influence ourselves and our children and our families to stop partaking of these satanic rituals. It's the same thing we see here in the Bible. Moving right along. Chapter 23. <clears throat> Joash crowned king of Judah. Now, is this over the whole 12 tribes? No. This is the king of Judah over the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, those two tribes. The other 10 tribes is Israel. Judah is Southern kingdom, Israel, Northern kingdom. Israel was not following God at this point. 23. In the seventh year, second Chronicles chapter 23. In the seventh year, the priest strengthened himself and made a covenant with the captains of hundreds, Jehodiah. Jehoiada. Is it Jehoiada or? Yeah, Jehoiada. In the seventh year, Jehoiada, the priest, uh, strengthened himself and made a covenant with the captains of hundreds. And you will see all the captains listed there. Verse two. And they went throughout Judah and gathered the Levites from all the cities of Judah and the chief fathers of Israel. And they came to Jerusalem. Okay. Then all the assembly made a covenant with the king and the house of God. And he said to them, behold, the king's son shall reign as the Lord, Yahweh, the creator God, has said of the sons of David. Boom. What is that? Told you a million times already. That's the Davidic covenant. You always have to know what covenant you are reading under. If what you are reading applies to a covenant, a plan, or a promise of God. And it always does. Okay? So God promised David and entered into a divine covenant with David that he will always have a king to sit on his throne from the lineage of David. That's why God is protecting the tribe of Judah, because what king comes from the tribe of Judah? Yes, David, Solomon, and all of those, yes, but what king comes from the tribe of Judah? The king of kings and the Lord of lords, Christ Jesus. So that's why Judah is protected. That's why Judah is the good side or the godly side the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom is Israel, okay? So it said, behold, the king's son shall reign as the Lord has said of the sons of David. That's why the baby had to be protected so that another king could rise in Judah. Follow me? Okay, that's the Davidic covenant. He will always have someone to sit on his throne from his lineage. So this is what you should do. One third of you, verse four, uh, entering on the Sabbath, of the priests and the Levites shall be keeping watch over the doors. It's just giving them assignments in this group of scriptures. So let me just flow through it. Read with me, okay? One third shall be in the king's house. One third at the gate of the foundation. All the people shall be in the courts of the house of the Lord. Let no one come into the house of the Lord except the priests 
and those of the Levites who served. They're just setting up everybody where they should be to make sure the king is protected and everyone is in its place, okay? Because this evil woman has killed everybody else. They may go in for they are holy, but all the people shall keep the watch of the Lord, okay? Establishing only the priests, but let no one come into the house of the Lord except the priests and those of the Levites who serve. That's what God already commanded, okay? Um, and the Levites shall surround the king on all sides. Every man with his weapons in his hand and whoever comes into the house, let him be put to death. You are to be with the king when he comes in and when he goes out. You know what that is? That's our secret service that you see today. <laughs> Same thing, okay? That's the secret service you see protecting the king. That's what they're setting up. So the Levites, I'm just saying, guys, technically, all right, don't send me 10 messages over that. I'm joking, okay? And verse eight, so the Levites and all Judah did according to all that Jehoad, um, Jeho, Jehoiada, oh, these names, Jehoiada, the priest had commanded. And each man took his men, who were to be on duty on the Sabbath and those who were going off duty on the Sabbath, but Jehoiada the priest had not dismissed the divisions. And Jehoiada the priest came to the captains of hundreds, um, the spears and large and small shields, which he had belonged to David, King David, that were in the temple of God. Then he said, all the people, every man with his weapon in his hand, from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple, along by the altar and by the temple and around the king. Yes, I'm speeding up a little bit to get to this point. Read along in your Bible, okay? If you ever see me speed up, that's just secondary information, okay? <laughs> Verse 11, and they brought out the king's son. This is what we were getting to. They brought out the king's son, put the crown on him. That's the anointing. Gave him the testimony. That's the assignment. <laughs> Come on. And made him king. Then Jehoiada and his sons anointed him and said, long live the king. Amen. So this is God chosen, not the mother killing everybody so that she could reign. Okay. Now, your next subheading before verse 12 says the death of Aphaliah. Okay. Now, when Aphaliah heard the noise of the people, running and praising the king. She came to the people in the temple of the Lord. When she looked, there was a king standing by his pillar at the entrance. Uh-oh, caught her by surprise. And the leaders and the trumpeters were by the king. All the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. Also the singers with musical instruments and those who led in praise. Come on. So Aphaliah tore her clothes and said, treason, treason. Um, when you see that, guys, tore clothes, that's common in the Hebrew custom that if there's a tragic event or something like that, they to an uh, outward expression of it is to rip your clothes, okay? All right. So Jehoiada, the priest, brought out the captains of hundreds who were set over the army. See, he had everything in place ahead of time to protect the king. Think about it. The king was still a child. Think about it. He hid for six years. So that means it should be around seven. Okay. Think about it. They had to protect the king. So Jehoiada, the priest, brought out the captains of a hundreds who were set over the army and said to them, take her outside under guard and slay her, kill her with the sword, whoever follows her. For the priest had said, do not kill her in the house of the Lord. So he made sure that nothing happened in the temple because God does not play about his house. God is a God of decency and order. God does not play about his house. You saw that when Jesus turned over the uh, merchant's table and said, uh, my father's house is not a house of den of thieves. Okay. So um, make sure that God's house is ran correctly. Come on, somebody. So they seized her and she went by the way of the entrance of the house gate and to the king's house and they killed her there, okay? Killed her there. Then Jehoiada made a covenant, that's the priest, made a covenant between himself, the people and the king that they should be the Lord's people. The priest is lining them up again to say, worship God and God alone. 
And all the people went, verse 17, went to the temple of Baal, the false god, satanic god, and tore it down. They broke it in pieces, its altars and images, and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. This is what they should have been doing all along, tearing down any temples where no satanic temples should be anywhere near the 12 tribes of Israel. First of all, let's say that. Also, Jehoiada appointed the oversight of the house of the Lord to the hand of the priests, the Levites. This was just reestablishing order. The priests slash pastors, like we have of our day, were already over the temple and over the tribes, the um, religious ceremonies of the tribes. God had already established that. That's what the tribe of Levites were assigned to do. That's what the priests were assigned to do. But the northern kingdom or the influence of the northern kingdom was <clears throat> um, circumventing that and worshiping false gods and false priests. Okay, false prophets and things like that. Okay, so he appointed the oversight of the house of the Lord to the hand of the priests, the Levites, whom David had assigned in the house of the Lord to offer the burnt offerings of the Lord, as it is written in the law of Moses, the commandments. Okay, um, with rejoicing and with singing, as it was established by David. So this is the upturn. They are doing the right thing. Okay, and he set the gatekeepers at the gates of the house of the Lord so that no one was in any way unclean should enter. You remember in Deuteronomy and in, in Leviticus, we went through what it means to be unclean. Okay. So we, we know that already. Okay. So they are just reestablishing the order. Okay. So then he took the captains of hundreds, the nobles, the governors of the people and all the people of the land and brought the king down from the house of the Lord. And they went through the upper gate to the king's house. Remember, there was always the temple that um, there was sacred to God, and always it says the king's house. That's like his palace. There was always two different structures, okay? The Ark of the Covenant was in the temple, not in the king's house. Remember that, okay? Um, and they went through the upper gate to the king's house and set the king on the throne of the kingdom. What kingdom, guys? The southern kingdom. Even though God had no intention for it to be divided, this is during the time period historically after 931 BC to where the kingdoms are divided, okay? So, and set the king on the throne of the kingdom. That's the southern kingdom, the king, kingdom of Judah. So all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was quiet. Quiet means um, refraining from war. There was no war for they had slain Aphaliah with the sword. All right, are we together so far? Everybody having fun? If you made it this far, viewing through YouTube, I forgot to say from the beginning, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, um, share this video, okay? Anyone that's listening um, on the Zoom line, everything that we talk about, the exact recording is transferred to YouTube. So please go to YouTube and get all the previous sessions uh, to catch you up. You, you have over 100 sessions on YouTube that I've recorded over the last couple of years. OK, so you will never catch up with me. <laughs> OK, so go on YouTube, subscribe, like, share, tell everybody about it so that they can get these teachings. OK, amen. All right. Now I'm depending on you. Subscribe, like and share. Come on. So now look at chapter 24. Look at. Look at chapter 24. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter 24. Come on in. It says, Joash repairs the temple. So now remember, I told you, he was hid for six years. So now 24 opens up. That reminds me of who? When, when Moses was hid. You remember that? So chapter 24. Joash was seven years old when he became king. Yes, seven. And he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. Now, what did he know about being king? He didn't, but God had the Levitical priests around him to govern, okay? He had a high priest. He had the Levitical priests around him to govern, and the priests heard from God, okay, and told the king what to do, and the priest, the high priest, was over, as we said, all of the captains of the armies, 
So this is how a seven-year-old could reign. I got that question during, during the week, okay? So Joash was seven years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. So, of course, he was trained the first half of his life, so he was fine. After that, he reigned 40 years, so he was 47 years old when he died, okay? So his mother's name was Abiah uh, of Beersheba. Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. Okay, that sounds good, right? But as I tell y'all, every word in the Bible is important. So slow down and read it. Look at how this is worded. Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Sounds good, right? But the end of that sentence says, he did that all the days of Jehoiada, the priest. <laughs> so let's see why it specifies that. So verse three, and Jehoiada took wives for him and he had sons and daughters. Now it happened after this, that Joaz set his heart on repairing the house of the Lord. Good thing. Then he gathered the priests and the Levites and said to them, go out to the cities of Judah and gather from all Israel money to prepare the house of your God from year to year and see that you do it quickly. That's tithe and offer people. Okay. However, the Levites did not do it quickly. Mm. So the king called Jehoiada, the chief priest, and said to him, why have you not required the Levites to bring in from Judah and from Jerusalem the collection, the tithe and offering? according to the commandment, the seed, according to the commandment of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and of the assembly of Israel for the tabernacle of witness, the temple, okay, the tabernacle. For the sons, for the sons of Aphaliah, that wicked woman <laughs> had broken into the house of God and had also presented all the dedicated things of the house of God to the Baals, to Satan. She walked in, she broke in, excuse me, stole everything and worship the devil with it. So we have to replenish that is what he's saying. Verse eight, then at the king's command, they made a chest and set it outside the gate of the house of the Lord. I see churches do this to this day. They, they have their collection out front, like in a box and you just walk out, you put it in the box. I see this to this day. And the king's command that they made a chest and set it outside at the gate of the house of the Lord. And they made a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem. Judah is the kingdom. Jerusalem is the location. To bring to the Lord the collection that Moses, the servant of God, had imposed on Israel in the wilderness. Okay? Then all the leaders and all the people rejoiced. So this is going back, all the way back to the commandments that Moses passed down, saying to give your tithe and your offering unto the house of God. Just that simple, guys. We don't need no long, drawn out story about why we should give unto God, because he gives us 100%. He just asked for a percentage back. That's all. So that his churches can thrive, and so that the poor can be, a, can be taken care of, the homeless can be taken care of, the widows can be taken care of, the children can be taken care of, that we can feed people. You are to sow a seed, yes. Yes, there are people out there that misuse that. Well, they got a million other churches. Go to them. They're doing it the right way. Okay? There's no perfect churches because there's no perfect people. Come on, somebody. Y'all going to get me to preaching. Okay? Don't talk about the tithe and offering just because you got some people doing it incorrectly or talk about the whole church because some people are doing it incorrectly. Go to another church that's doing it correctly. So into good ground, people. You got spiritual discernment and you got common sense and you got intelligence. Don't sow your money into unfertile ground. All right, I'm going to move on. I'm going to leave y'all alone. I'm going to leave y'all alone. And they made a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem to bring the Lord collection that Moses, the servant of God, had imposed on Israel in the wilderness. Don't worry, guys. Y'all got a bunch of people like myself who don't preach for money. Don't ask for nothing in return. There's a lot of people out there like that, okay? So do what you're supposed to do, but so it's a good ground. Then all the leaders and all the people rejoiced, brought their contributions, and put them into the chest until all had given. So it was that 
at that time when the chest was brought to the king's official by the hand of the Levites, and when they saw that there was much money that the king's scribe and the high priest officer came and emptied the chest and took it and returned to its place. Thus they did day by day and gathered money in abundance. For what? For the upkeep of the house and the rebuilding of the house of God, the temple. Not for man, for God. The collection is never for man, it's for God. Verse 12, then King Jehoiada gave it to those who did the work of the service of the house of the Lord. Service, service. <laughs> and they hired uh, masons and carpenters to repair the house, masons and bricklayers. They hired bricklayers and carpenters to repair the house of the Lord and also those who worked in iron and bronze to restore the house of the Lord. Get it? The work. So the workmen labored and the work was completed by them. They restored the house of God to his original condition and reinforced it. When they had finished, they brought the rest of the money before the king Jehoiada and made from it articles for the house of God. Articles for serving and offering spoons and vessels, gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of who? Told you everywhere it matters. Offered burnt offerings. That means they're worship, worshiping God, people. Burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of the king. That's not what it said. All the days of somebody else, of the captains. That's not what it said. It said, continually all the days of Jehoiada, the priest. Remember, this boy was young, and they was training him up as he went, okay? But let's look at verse 15. Every word means something. Slow down and read it. Your heading or subheading over right before verse 15 says, apostasy of Joash. Let's see what this apostasy was, okay? Verse 15, but Jehoiada grew old and was full of days and he died. He was 130 years old when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and his house, capital H, that means God's house. He did good in Israel. He did good towards God. And he did good serving God's house. Watch your capitalization when you're reading. If it gives that capital, then you know that it's the divine. Because you would have read it both toward God and his house, thinking that was Jehoiada's house. No, that's God's house. Okay. Now, after the death of Jehoiada, the leaders of Judah came and bowed down to the king. And the king listened to them. Therefore, they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers and served wooden images and idols. And am I reading this right? And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem because of their trespass. I can't be reading that right. After you tear down, after you were protected as a baby, raised by the Levites to be a godly king, tore down the temples of Baal, of Satan, as soon as Jehoiada dies, the priest, I I know I didn't read that correctly. Listen, now, after the death of Jehoiada, the leaders of Judah came and bowed down to the king, and the king listened to them. This was the leaders of Judah. This wasn't the priest. Mm, it didn't say the Levites. It said the leaders. Watch the counsel that you think is wise that is in your ear. Didn't I just tell you that earlier? And the king listened to them. He should have been listening to the Levites. The king listened to these leaders. Therefore, they left the house of the Lord God, of their fathers, <clears throat> of their ancestors, 
and serve wooden images. You shall have no images before me. You shall have no gods before me. These wooden images and idols. And so what happened? Semicolon, pause. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem because of their trespasses. Forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. Verse 19, yet he sent <clears throat> prophets to them. Who is he? L look at the word. He is capitalized. It's just a little Bible reading trick. Look at the capitalization. In the middle of a sentence, you got a capital H. That does not belong in the middle of a sentence, right? So then that's the divine. Yet capital H, he, God, sent prophets to them to bring them back to the capital L, Lord, God. And they testified against them. But, comma, but they would not listen. Mm. Are you kidding me? It says no matter what they did, verse 18, yet, verse 19, 19 says, so what, what is this a, a, a example of? No matter where you are, somebody shout grace. Hmm. Grace. 18, verse 18, they worship wooden images and idols. Verse 19 says, yet, God's grace, come on, somebody. He sent prophets to them to bring them back. And they testified against him. But they rebuked God's grace. They would not listen. Verse 20, then the spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest. Okay, the spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, who stood above the people and said to them, thus says God, why do you transgress the commandments of the Lord so that you cannot prosper? question mark. Why would you do this? Look what I underlined in your notes for you. Because you have forsaken the Lord, comma, he has also forsaken you. Mm. Why? Because of what they did. Sin does not, sin separates us from God. God is always there. He would never leave us nor forsake us. But sin separates us from God, not the other way around. So they conspired against him. And the commandment of the king, they stone at the commandment of the king, they stoned him with stones in the court of the house of the Lord. So let me make sure I, I, I say this correctly now. God's grace gave them another option. They refused. God's grace came upon them again. And the spirit of God came upon Zechariah to speak to them, to show grace again. God is always trying to pull us back, always. He would never leave us out there. He will always pull us back, okay? But what do they do? They conspired against who? Zechariah. And the commander, the, at the command of the king, they stoned him with stones in the court of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash, the king, did not remember the kindness of Jehodiah, his father, had done to him, but killed his son. And as he died, he said, the Lord look on it and repay it. Oh, my God. Did you see that? Zechariah, get it now. Zechariah is the son of the priest who has trained Joaz, <laughs> y'all gonna make me lose my voice. The son of the priest, Jehodiah, who trained Joash when he was but seven years old. And you killed this man's son because he told you you ain't living right. <laughs> see that? Now see, when all this bad information came, oh, they listened. 
But then when God's correction comes, oh, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. And we do that same thing today. The preacher, the prophet, the seer, the, 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 the pastor, the counselor, your mom, your dad, your uncle, your aunt, tell you right from wrong. Tell you what does save the Lord. Your husband, your wife, tell you what does save the Lord. But you don't want to hear that because it's a spirit of correction. But you want to hear anything negative. And then it goes even farther to say everything that he didn't want to hear, he stoned the, he stoned the one who told him. <laughs> Ain't this something? He stoned the son of the priest that raised him, that protected him, that set up legions around him to protect him, to make sure he was okay. And you kill his son because of the word of correction that came out of his mouth. People today will leave a church because of the word of correction that came down from the man of God. You don't want to hear it. <laughs> You'll stop reading your Bible because you don't want to hear what the word does say if the Lord says to your spirit. You were made in the image and the likeness of God. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, the Holy Spirit came within you. And when you accepted that Holy Spirit within you, come on, come on, somebody. When you accepted the Holy Spirit within you, then God is able to speak to you and commune with you. There's always that pull because we're made in the image and likeness. Even when we're not in God, when we haven't found God yet in our lives, there's still that pull within us because he made us. But when we accept him truly and the Holy Spirit lives within us, then his spirit connects with your spirit because it's his spirit that's inside of you. So then when that word comes and that spirit of correction comes, you know it's right, but you don't want to hear it. And you don't want to read your Bible because that rod of correction is against you. But that's what the word is for. It's a two-edged sword. It cuts you going in, but it heals you coming out. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I got I to gotta finish this lesson. Y'all cutting up tonight. Y'all cutting up tonight. Then the spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jedediah, the priest, who stood above the people and said to them, thus says God, why do you transgress against the commandments of the Lord? Okay. Then they conspired against him. And at the command of the king, they stoned him with stones in the court of the house of the Lord. And Joash, the king, did not remember the kindness of, of uh, Zechariah's father, Jehodiah, his father, had done to him, but killed his son. And as he died, this brother looked up at the people and said, the Lord look on it and repay you. Mm. What is he saying? My revenge will be of God and not of me. Mm. The Lord will fight my battles and the Lord will take up revenge against what you have done because I came with a word from the Lord. So the Lord will repay you. And if you have a study Bible, which you should by this point in time, if you have a study Bible, you will see that your next heading says the death of Joash. <laughs> it is. Here go to repayment, verse 23. So it happened in the spring of the year that the army of Syria came up against him, him, the king. And they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the leaders of the people from among the people and set all and sent all their spoil to the king of Damascus. For the army of the Syrians came with a, oh, come on now. I hope you didn't read this too fast. Look, 24, for the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men, but the Lord delivered a very great army into their hand <laughs> because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. So they executed judgment <laughs> against Joaz. What are you saying, preacher? I'm glad you asked. We've seen over and over again, God take a few to accomplish a lot, but we see it from the viewpoint of God taking his few people to accomplish great victories over the enemy. 
But look at what is going on now. He flipped the script because of their disobedience. He took God, took a small company of men and did great against his own people. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men, but the Lord delivered a great army into the hands of a small company of Syrians. So because of their lack of trust to God, because of their disobedience, God allowed a very small group of people to conquer a great army of the land because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. So they executed judgment against Joash. So when God wants to pass judgment, he would take a great number of people that's supposed to be following him he would cause a war to happen with a little small group of people to conquer them. Now, if they, was, if they were walking with God, then God always took a small group of the people following him and worshiping him and honoring him, took a small group to conquer great things. But he can do the same thing in punishment. We always want the blessings, but we never want the correction. If you are obedient, the blessings will come. You disobedient, then the correction will come. Thank God for Jesus, amen? Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Because this is how he had to correct them in the Old Testament. We have our propitiation. We have our atonement. We have our redeemer in Christ Jesus. So we can repent of our sins. But he gave them chance after chance to correct themselves. So then he had to pass judgment. Verse 25, so we can finish this. And when they had withdrawn from him, for they left him severely wounded, his own servants conspired against him because of the blood of the sons of Jehadiah the priest and killed him on his bed. So he died and they buried him in the city of David, but they did not bury him in the tomb of the kings for what he had did. So these are the ones who conspired against him. Zabad and all the ones that are, are listed there, verse 27, now concerning his sons and the many oracles about him and the repairing of the house of God, indeed, they are written in the annals of the book of the kings. Then Amaziah, his son, reigned in his place. So now verse 25 is going to open next Thursday. Verse 25 is going to open with a new king, Amaziah. I wanted to get to verse to chapter 25 today. We're not going to make it, and I'm not going to rush it, okay? So we're going to hit verse 2. We're going to start at verse 20. And I'm sorry, chapter 25. We're going to start at chapter 25 next week, okay? So read ahead of time. Read ahead of time, okay? Guys, in the two, we, we started about four minutes after. Hey, everybody that's made it this far on YouTube, subscribe, like, share. You will do your part to push out this gospel just by subscribing, liking, sharing this video, sharing, looking at all the videos, and then YouTube will push out this content to other people. If they feel you like it and will subscribe, they will send it to somebody else, okay? So everybody that's on Zoom line, if you haven't subscribed, go to YouTube, search Back to Basic Bible Study, go there, subscribe, like, and share, okay? So now, what is our takeaways, guys? You have the southern kingdom, you have the northern kingdom. The southern kingdom was the kingdom that was to worship God, that was worshiping God. But we see the one true God. The other 10 tribes, the other 10 tribes, they were influenced in worship and worshiping the false gods, these false idols, these wooden idols, these, um, these gods of Baal. And we see over and over again, we see that they are being influenced by the world around them instead of influencing the world, okay? It's supposed to be the other way around. My brother, my sister, you feel as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, you feel that you're one in a million. You can look at every TV show, every movie, every song that comes on the radio, and it's all, you can find satanic things in just about 90% of the stuff we see, okay? It's the same principle that was going on in the Bible. 
you have a select few surrounded by a lot of evil. The word of God declares all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everyone born on this earth is born into sin because of the sin of Adam. Once we come into our own mind and our own intellect and we accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior, Yeshua the Messiah, when we accept him, then we're back into the family of God. Okay, we are bought with a price. The, the blood that was shed on Calvary, we are bought with a price and we are purchased back to God. Then you become a select few, a select kingdom of God that now you're up against the entire world. So don't feel that something is wrong with that picture. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way the Bible was. We look at it and we say to ourselves, how can they constantly keep falling into sin, falling into sin, falling into sin? You have, the, you, you have one big family, the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 sons. All of them was against the world. Everything around them was evil. All the other nations was evil. All these ites, Hittites, Amorites, all these ites out there, all of them was against them, okay? So they were influenced by the world. So one man, where it started with one king, King Jeroboam, broke off from those 12 tribes and took 10 tribes with him. So when they took 10 tribes with them, the kingdom split to southern and northern. So now you went from 12 tribes being influenced by the world or, or against the whole world. Instead of having 12 tribes, godly, the whole world, not godly. Now you have two tribes, godly, 10 tribes, not godly. Okay. So imagine the influence that they're under now. So when you're reading and you're wondering why is it going over and over again, that they keep falling, look at all the influences that they have against them. So my brother, my sister, I come to tell you, watch your influences. Watch what you see, watch what you hear, watch what you let in your ear gates and your eye gates. It just disgusts me when I saw the pictures and the clips from that award show that just recently aired. It was flat out satanic rituals on the stage and no one said anything. You could scan the audience and they was just flashing all these satanic symbols worshiping the devil right there on that on that award show the world is evil people we are the chosen few amen somebody amen may god bless you and keep you as my prayer uh, come back next week for back to basic bible study as we always say in closing uh, may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you may the lord lift up his contents upon you and give you peace May this word grow as seeds in your spirit and manifest in your heart. May your love of God grow through your knowledge of God's word. Amen. Amen. Leave a comment, guys, if you want to. If you want to send me a message, um, please subscribe, like, and share across YouTube. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the channel. Come back next week for Back to Basics Bible Study. This has been session 118. We went over 2 Chronicles chapter 22, 23, and 24. We will pick up chapter 25 on next week. May God bless you and keep you as my prayer.